Hi guys, thank you for joining us today. Uh, today's video is gonna be really short. Um, I've had a few people reach out that have the KF X1 or the X1 Reaper, uh, new to powder coating, and they didn't know how to uh, clean or put powder in the cups or the hopper. So this video is just gonna be about the KF X1, uh, dealing with the hopper, dealing with the fluidizer, or hopper is a fluidizer the cup and a few other things on a kfx one so uh it's not really a powder coating video it's just a little information video for the uh, few people that asked me to do it so we will be dealing with that today also uh just an fyi we started another channel atomic firearms uh the information will be down in the lower part of this video in the description um we are always getting asked about uh powder coating firearms and of course most guys know you can't powder coat uh 90 percent of the firearm uh you have to seracote it so in order to seracote a firearm you have to have your ffl so uh the past eight months we went through the process we're about two weeks away from getting it we did our inspection the other day um, so we're going to start a channel basically of our journey being green to it. Uh, not my partner, uh, you'll meet him. Uh, he, he's had an FFL and he's been doing a Sarah coating. So, uh, I talked to him to come in on board and starting this, uh, endeavor with me. So he said, yes. So this is where we're at. So we will be doing Sarah coating firearms on that channel. Uh, powder coating. We will be bringing some of our Cerakote over to here. Um, but that channel is basically going to be our journey, the steps that we have to take, things we have to do to be a company, uh, dealing with the ATF. There's a lot of freaking rules and regulations. Um, creating our own firearm line. Uh, we're in the process of trying to uh, do that too. So uh, a lot of interesting stuff to come over there. So uh, let's get to this and uh, for the few of you that have asked me, I hope this helps you guys out. Um, and if any of you guys need any uh, powder coating system like that one right there, uh, get hold of me, uh, KFX1 or the KFX1 Reaper. Um, uh, we can get you hooked up with one uh, decent price. We also have a Facebook uh, group uh, growing by the day, basically. Um, uh, with new owners that you can be a part of with green people in it along with people that have a lot of experience to uh, help you so okay guys uh, please check out our other channel down in the description and have a great day Okay guys, so step number one, we're gonna deal with the cup. Um, with our systems, you can buy, I call them three small units, two big units. Three small units come with just this piece that's in here, which is the control unit. Just a control unit and this, with of course everything to start. Control unit and one of these, everything to start or a control unit and i think it's a 10 pound hopper uh metal hopper uh with everything to start the two big units is like i have here a box feeder unit where you can put a box on the bottom that vibrates and you get this tube that goes down to it right it sucks it right out of the bag and the other one is a hopper feeder uh, it has a big freaking uh, hopper to it so Let's start with this one, okay? So to this one, all you're gonna do, do not grab this and turn this. This will pop out, this will break. Um, huh, Garvey? Um, it's already happened to a few people. So turn this. So just turn it on top. Turn 
Okay. So you're gonna get this seal inside, okay? When we do this, we say, say this was dirty, uh, we just end up blowing this. We put our thing here, blow out the ends, come down through, same thing, blow down through. This, same thing, face away from you, never face towards you. Never face towards you and do it, always face away from you. Um, I'll literally put it like this and blow it, puff of smoke. When we're done with this and blowing it out, we'll take a, a cloth and wipe it out to make sure it's clean. When you put it back together, make sure you do not forget the rubber seal. When you fill it up, we'll go over that. These have a tendency of stripping, so just very carefully go until it catches, and then if it catches, it'll go on easy. Never fill these more than I'd say three quarters. You have to have some air pressure in there, okay? So three quarters. So that's how to deal with this. Uh, later on, we'll go through, or I'll show you in the book, what wires go to each one of these, okay? Next, fluidizer or hopper. Uh, this is the pump on the top. You're gonna get this separately. Uh, this is an aftermarket one that I bought off eBay. So um, it looked different. I think I said that. So with the KFX one, you will get one that looks like this. Okay. Um, I personally didn't like it. It did its job. Um, so I went aftermarket and I got this one. I think it's a, a Gima. I think it's a Gima on it. Okay. With these, see this piece right here? It's an extra. Okay. You get them extra in a kit because they go on the bottom of here. With these fluidizers, for some reason, they surge. So you gotta put this exhaust in. Uh, so drill a hole and put one of these pieces in. You can see I kind of just force it right into the hole, okay? Then I bought a spare one of these. Uh, so it's a 90 instead of straight. They give you one that's straight. I don't like it because um, I like to set mine in the side of the machine. So this, all it does, go here and then give it a little bit of pressure. And the two rubber grommets will seal inside. Okay. Okay, this, same concept. Turn the top, not the bottom. Not anything else. Okay. So with this, I do the same thing. I'll go away from me, spray inside, get it all clean, get your ridges here clean or the threads clean. If I call things other things, that's all right. Uh, just what we do in my neck of the woods. So we have multi, multi uses for multi uh, names. So just blow it on out. Okay, take a cloth. We usually take a paper towel. And because on the bottom of this is a paper. I mean, you can't really see that, but that's paper. That's not uh, uh, material. So then we just take a cloth, go all the way down. And then like this, until it comes clean. Okay, with this, same thing. Blow, okay, clean it up wipe it down go very lightly on the top make sure if it's hard at all take it off and redo this part okay okay with these three quarters do not go higher than three quarters you have to have that that air up in there okay your downspout okay so this let me make sure that it shows. So this one, there's a box that sits here. This goes down into the box, into your bag. This tightens and holds it there, okay? Now when your machine is running, when everything's hooked up, okay, 
And this, let me just, let me go down on top, it's easier for you guys. And then this, same concept as before, you put it in. Now your airlines are hooked up, okay? So with all your airlines and everything, when you're done this, this will be going to your gun. This will be a tube that goes to your gun. This tube right here, this part goes into your gun. It has a barb on the end. And this will just, of course, go here, okay? So we got that. So when you take this apart, let's take this up. Sorry for all the movement. I, I'm not like half these people and have a thousand GoPros and all that bullshit. I actually have a, uh, iPhone X that I do all my shit off from. Okay, so we got this now, right? So we're gonna take this out. Again, we went over blowing this out, right? You blow it in one end, blow it out the other end. Pretty con, pretty basic concept. This, same thing. It's a tube, okay? It goes down through, blow it, blow it out, get all the gunk out of that, okay? Uh, wipe it down Then with this on anything you'll use this you'll use this on these ones and On these ones uh, Same thing I take it I have it aiming out the end Then I'll put my tube or my blower down in there hold it Pull the handle and it blows freaking powder out the other end. I'll turn around, I'll do the exact same thing. I'll grab this end, aim this end away, and then blow it so it blows the tube out. Uh, in a few minutes, we'll go through the setup of what wires go to what, but we'll look at it in a book. Uh, that way, it should make it easier for you guys. Um, if you're using one of these, if you're using, using, yeah, using, if you're using, wait, let me get, uh, if you guys are using one of these, make sure that your fluidizer setup on there is at least eight. If you're like five, I think five and below, nothing will come out. You'll be spraying nothing. Uh, you turn it up to eight, you might have to wait a few minutes for it to work it, or a few seconds to work its way through the tubing and everything, but it will work. Um, so just remember that. But when you get the machine, again, I've said this in previous videos, dot fluidizer is cranked. These systems, I think, were created for uh, an automated system. So you got like a lot of them in a row in a factory. Uh, so they come cranked up. Well, of course, what we're doing, we don't want it cranked up. So very first thing before you put powder in this and try using this, Turn down your fluidizer, otherwise you're gonna get powder everywhere. Um, I'll try to put a little picture right here of one of my buddies that had powder everywhere uh, the first time he tried spraying. So learn from him, don't do it, okay? Um, okay, next we're gonna just go over the book and show the, uh, the graph of what to hook up to what. Uh, just get that part done and we should be done. Okay, guys, so here's the box feeder unit. Let's just quickly do this. I'm not going to turn it on. If you want to see it on, uh, I'll put a link up in the top right now, somewhere. Uh, that will show you what this looks like and what all these buttons are for. Okay, so this is a box feeder one. Um, they have, like I said, they have it with the box feeder with that. Then they have one with a big ass hopper that are. Yeah, I guess you'd call it a hopper there. And then they have just the little units that you'd put on something like that, kind of like what I did with my KKHD system. Uh, Cause that comes in one of these big setups too. I just got the basic. Okay, on the back, <clears throat> you see all my spaghetti, but you see everything's marked well. Um, you'll see, I don't have a ground. I don't use ground. Um, that ground basically is for somebody that doesn't have things like that. So I got a, an earth ground. And if you look at my wire, it goes up 
to a ground rod. And my ground rod is coming to this. And my other disc, I can go to a part uh, if I wanted to, but I've never had to. I just have it on there. Just to be honest, I don't freaking know why I have it on there because it's hooked up to the exact same freaking thing. So my parts are grounded right here. Um, so I don't need the extra ground. Now, if I didn't have that earth ground and I was turning around and I was hooking my ground to something like this or uh, something metal somewhere, uh, who knows, you know, a pole, uh, then I may want to uh, add an extra ground to that. But you're also getting the ground out of, you're getting the ground from there to here. And this ground is supposed to be going from here to your part. But if your part's already grounded, of course you don't need it. Okay, so let's go down through. Uh, that makes the bottom vibrate. But if you look here, okay, you got your fluidizing and everything. Everything's well marked, okay? So with that being said, I'm not sure all of you have this book. So let me just show it to you. Well, I guess we can go without the, okay, there. So if you're using the hopper, so this is just me figuring out my new system, which one was powder and which one was a clean air. Um, just because it was different from that. So had to figure it out. I figured it out though. Okay. So this is literally tie-in telling you the bottom, the bottom one is going to the powder. The top one is going to the clean air. Okay. Then to your gun base, to your gun cleaning from your air in, okay? Same gun. Oh, the only thing I did notice this one doesn't have is if you notice, you got your fluidizer right there. You notice there ain't nothing out of that? So that's something you won't go by. You're gonna do your fluidizing there, which is this bottom one with the three arrows. That's gonna hook up to the bottom of your, your fluidizer, okay? Okay, cup, same thing. Okay, we are gonna go clean air, goes to the bottom one, powder, top one. Gun cleaning is the red arrow. Goes there. And then you hook this into the bottom of the gun, which we'll go over in a little bit because I've been asked about that a few times. So we'll deal with that one too. Okay. Down tube. There's nothing different on a down tube. You're still dealing with this. So on the end, still goes to the bottom of your gun. Your top one is still clean air. Your bottom one is still the powder. And then there's a one right here. There, you'll end up seeing that in the tube. And it's for fluidizing. Okay. And that's that one. I think that one was it. Yep. So now we'll go over actual hookups. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Gun. Okay. Basic air guns. This is a spare shell. Um, so as you see, it doesn't have a cord coming out. Um, so if you're going to clean a gun, let's just go over that. So let's say, let me give you guys some sight to what I'm doing. Okay. So sorry for all the ca camera movement. Got your gun, you just powder coated. You're gonna have powder everywhere, okay? You're all set. This is your cleaning air hose. 
which would be that red. Remember down on the back of the machine, there's a fluidizer over here and over here is that red arrow. That's your cleaning. So don't have that too high because when you have powder come out, it'll blow extra, but you want it hooked up because it helps it from building up up there. Okay. So this machine has an automatic uh, cleaner that you can run like two or three cycles and then clean it. Um, I've never had the time to sit there and wait until it runs the cycles. If you do, awesome, do it. Um, otherwise, you don't. Okay, so that goes there. Okay, these are barbs, okay? These are important. You can get them like this, you can buy them like this, okay? So one end, you can see, goes in our thing. So this right here, pull back with your finger. See what I'm saying? When you pull back, it opens that up. So when you pull back, you open that up, you push that in, get in there, let go, pull, and you can feel a tension. Now you're ready to powder coat. You have this, and of course your other line. This is how it will look. Oh, I'm get that off my screen. This is how it will look for this and for this one, okay? So to get this out again, I take my fingers, I pull it back, and then this just pops out and then I let it go, okay? We just powder coated, okay? Unscrew this, take whatever tip you got. We've got a few tips. Uh, this system actually comes with quite a few tips too. So we take it off, okay? You'll notice the little metal piece. So when I get this, I aim away from me. As soon as that's all off, I aim away from me and I blow down in here. It'll blow powder out, vice versa. Turn around, blow, it blows powder out. Do that a couple times, okay? As soon as you're done with that, I turn around, I wipe it all off, you know, just to get the gun clean. This part is done. Let's say this one, okay? So then these are sealed in, so we take them apart. Take your finger, just make sure, take your thumbnail or something, just make sure that tip is clean, okay? With it pulled apart, I'll blow blow all the powder off it, make sure, blow inside, make sure it's clean. This, same thing, make sure it's all clean. Put it back together, okay? There. This is important. If you look on the bottom of this, you see that white, there's a circle there. Well, on the bottom side, there's also a circle there you can't see, uh, you can kind of see it's an indent. It's not white, it's an indent. It's not completely cut out. The reason is, you see that? So you want the white to match up with that because that way it lets the, elect I'm gonna get this wrong, electro or electricity through. So electrolysis or whatever the fuck it is, or sorry, whatever it is. So I look at the white up, they're both up. So I'm gonna put it on. Okay, I can see it hasn't seated completely. If I turn barely, I can feel it when it pops. Pops, okay, it popped in the hole. Now I don't want it to move, okay? This is where I, this is my method. I put this straight on, okay? I hold this with my fingers. Okay, as I start to turn it, then I hold a system with my fingers as I start to turn it. Otherwise, this will turn inside as you're turning this. That way it pops that electrode or that metal piece out of the plastic. So I always hold it with my chest. Turn it. Pretty snug, not completely tight, it's snug. Okay, boom. Got that, okay. Same concept. Let's try one more. Same concept with this. 
you're gonna have one that has a white, white there. Put it down over, hold it in place. There, just like that, okay? So I think that covers the gun. It covers the, the pumps, that's the name of this, the pumps, the gun, the gun cleaning. Um, and then we already went over the diagrams in the back of the gun. So uh, for you guys that have hit me up this past week asking me to do this, I hope uh, that helped cover some of that stuff. If it didn't, just hit me up again. I'll try to figure something else out. Um, but besides that, yeah, I will, like I said, uh, more towards the beginning, I put a link up to the setup. The setup shows literally me hooking it up. Uh, it shows it when it's turned on, shows how to adjust things, all that stuff. When you get these things, see, this is what I do on mine. I don't know if it's gonna show good, but I have that as like one of them is my fluidizer normal, my fluidizer hot, which is hot blocking. And the other one is my cup normal. So when I'm using my cup, these are my starts. And then I got like a PO, PO2 is this one, PO1 is this one, PO3 is this one. These are my starting with, these are not what I'll use. So I'll put them on this and then whatever part it is, all parts are different. So I'll, I'll adjust it as I go to get exactly what I want. Um, but, Okay, guys, I think that is about enough time, enough of wasting your guys' time. Um, I hope this helped uh, you guys. Also, again, if you need a system, let us know. We're selling the X1s. Uh, we don't make a single penny off it. We do it to help you guys. Uh, we also are, we have a group uh, for all the X1 owners. That way it's nice, if you have a question, you're asking people with the same system as you. If you're having issues with laying something down, uh, a primer or a, a metallic, you're able to say, hey guys, I'm laying this metallic down. Anybody else done it? What was your settings? All machines are different as you guys know, and I know that too, but it's just a little bit easier when you're having the same thing or uh, troubleshooting. Uh, I had a guy today uh, in the group uh, troubleshooting something. Uh, and then he gets answers to it. So, um, okay. Uh, I hope this was informational for you guys that asked me to do it. Uh, you guys that didn't ask me to do it, I apologize. There's no powder coating in this, but uh, Sarah coating coming soon. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, the video. I do appreciate it. We're almost at 600 subscribers, which we'll do another giveaway. The last giveaway was a hat and things like this. I think this giveaway will be one of my uh, fuck it, uh, uniform shirts. Uh, so on the front, it has the, the fuck it symbol. And on the back, it will have our company logo. Uh, but it will have a, it'll be one of our shirts. Um, also, uh, please uh, come over and support us on our other channel, the Atomic uh, Firearms. Uh, it's down in the description. Uh, would really appreciate it. We want to start growing that. Uh, it's going to be dealing with basically everything firearms. Like if we buy get new firearms, we're going to be testing it. Um, when we're building firearms, you're going to see how we're building the firearms. You're going to see us coding firearms. Uh, the good one thing I did about ask the lady at the ATF when she came here is, do I need an FFL to powder coat one of your guys' uh, guns? Uh, do I, of course I need it, but do I have to send it to an FFL or do you have to send it back? No, if you own that firearm and it's in your name, you can ship it right to us, we can code it, we can ship it right back to you and you don't have to go through the hassle of finding an FFL to ship it and pay them and all that uh, BS. So um we can and we're gonna be starting our own line of ars uh we're trying to find a company to work with for some lowers uh atomic firearm lowers we're gonna do some i believe ar-15s uh 556s five, five, uh we're gonna get the lowers we're gonna do they're gonna be blank lowers and we're gonna build it up to how we want them uh we're gonna build five identical ones uh to how again we want them so all railed up, the the best of the best parts. Um, 
Uh, me and my partner are going to take number one and two, and we're going to sell three, four, and five. Um, so uh, can't wait for that project. And of course, that project will be on here too. Um, and in a little bit, I will have a little video over on the FFL about, uh, or sorry, on the Atomic channel uh, about the FFL process that we went through. In case any of you other powder coaters out there uh, are thinking about doing it. Um, that way it's kind of like a step-by-step. -step. And then again, that channel is gonna watch us grow. We're about two weeks from receiving it, uh, our license. Uh, and we're gonna try growing our business and uh, we'll see where that goes. But please like, subscribe, please support our other channel and we'll see you on the flip side.